This program looks at how Bookmobile service developed over the years and how it established the foundation for all Hennepin County Library service. During the library system's early years, the Bookmobile led the way in furnishing library service throughout the county, fulfilling the mission of reaching those who did not have easy access to library services. Even before the county library system was officially created in 1922, service was provided to rural residents of the county thanks to a determined Gracia Countryman, librarian at Minneapolis Public Library. Somehow she found ways to provide books to the people, often delivering them herself in her own car. An enthusiastic motorist, she made the trips a lark, sharing meals with farm families, creating friendships, and spreading the gospel that people who want books must have them. In those earliest years, she was assisted by Nils Barlingtaug, the first in a line of remarkable bookmobile drivers. Missionary like Zeal, Minneapolis librarian Gracia Countryman continued to promote the need for the Hennepin County Commissioners to fund library services for rural residents. Finally, a tax was levied in 1921 for funding beginning in 1922. Former Hennepin County Library Director Helen Young recalls Countryman's leadership and her role in creating the Hennepin County Library. Miss Countryman, of course, had been the um, well, the founder, really, of the Hennepin County Library, she'd been the impetus behind it, and, and um, she was the one who had pressured Hennepin County commissioners to authorize the establishment of a library, and before, even before that, Minneapolis had been giving service to county residents for a long, long time, free service, and uh, anybody, they could come into the library and use the facilities and use the books and so forth, but then she finally did pressure the commissioners, and she was a very forceful person. Um, and in 1921, I think that the board authorized it after the legislature had also passed the enabling legislation. The first official county bookmobile trip was in June 1922. With covered shelves on the outside, that first vehicle was called a book wagon. Librarian Countryman was aboard it on its maiden journey to the outlying community of Excelsior. It didn't take long to establish regular routes based on requests from residents, and the book wagon soon was visiting 115 places each month, including 80 schools. The book wagon carried about 500 books. Working aboard the book wagon was a challenge. I can just imagine going out to these <coughs> farmyards and the dust and the dirty roads and and uh, not very good insulation and <laughs> wouldn't be very much fun. During those years, Hennepin County Library occupied space in the Minneapolis Public Library at 10th Street and Hennepin Avenue South in downtown Minneapolis. Helen Young explains the relationship between the two library systems. There was a very close relationship between Minneapolis and Hennepin County. And uh, Miss Countryman, of course, was the librarian of the, and the director of the, or the, she was the librarian of Hennepin County as well as Minneapolis. And then she appointed the director. And, um, and really, she did, didn't have anything to do with the daily operation of the library. 
<laughs> but um, the staff, the two staffs were very close, very good friends. Everybody got along beautifully, no problems whatsoever. The first driver of the county book wagon was Francis Matson. Helen Young describes the recruitment of the first librarian, Josephine Cloud. She had been working in one of the departments in Minneapolis, and I don't know, I don't think she was really terribly 100% sold on having this position, but she was told it was her moral duty to take it. <laughs> In addition to Josephine Cloud, librarians who worked aboard the county book wagon in 1922 included Pearl Sabin and Pauline Field. The second year brought a 400% increase in book wagon circulation. Patrons were delighted with the service. They could request special books and count on the book wagon to deliver them. Books were eagerly loaned from neighbor to neighbor as well as from the book wagon to the individual. The only complaint seemed to be that reading books sometimes kept farm children from their chores. When librarian Pearl Sabin resigned in 1925, Gracia Countryman persuaded Ethel Berry to become Hennepin County librarian. Barry arrived back at headquarters after her first day on the job, wondering how she had been persuaded to give up the interesting job of organizing the library at the Minneapolis Journal newspaper to accept the crazy position at the county library at a lower salary. The fascination of the position soon won her over, however. Each farm family served during the early days of the county library had a real feeling of friendship for and devotion to the library. The family shared a lot more than a mutual interest in books with a friendly librarian and driver. They shared joys and sorrows, the arrival of a new baby, the return of a son from overseas duty, the recurring bouts with bad roads in the early spring breakups and the winter blizzards. They exchanged choice recipes and foods as they forged strong ties of loyalty. The book wagon, with its outside shelves, proved inadequate and was replaced in 1928 with a small walk-in type of truck, a Model T Ford. The following year was the stock market crash and the ensuing worldwide depression. Despite that and limited funding, the county library system was growing and serving more and more people. In the early 1930s, the years of depression laid a heavy hand on library services. The staff was overworked. Salaries and hours of service had to be cut. Not only were the libraries used overwhelmingly as the only source of free recreational material, 
but tax evaluation dropped, leading to lower budgets and consequently diminishing additions to the book collection. In 1932, the system's book collection totaled 70,000 volumes, and annual circulation was more than a half million. During these years, the Model T book truck also showed unmistakable signs of complete collapse. Somehow, funds for a replacement were managed, and a new Rio Speedwagon with shelving capacity for 1,000 volumes was put into service in 1934. By 1935, about 89 small rural schools were borrowing heavily from the book truck. As books were literally worn to shreds, the welcome help of a group of bookmenders in 1936 under the government WPA project proved a lifesaver to the dwindling book stock. It was estimated that WPA workers mended 10,000 books. Library staff were calling their vehicle a book truck. Driver Carl Hagen objected to the previous term used, book wagon and librarian Ethel Berry thought bookmobile was too stylish for their equipment. In 1937, Gracia Countryman, at the age of 71, retired as Minneapolis Library Director. A Robbinsdale resident, she remained close to the Hennepin County Library, the fledgling system she had been so instrumental in establishing. The following year, in 1938, Helen Young joined the county library staff as the first assistant librarian under Ethel Berry. The next year, Olaf Jacobson was hired as bookmobile driver. I started March 1st, 1939, and uh, my salary was $65 a month. But my salary was that because it was this ordinary starting salary for that job would be $60 a month, but I had four years experience shelving books in the Minneapolis Public Library from 1928 to 1932, so I didn't have to be trained in shelving. It was easier shelving books in the Hennepin County Library than it was in the city anyway. But um, So I got $5 more on the strength of that. But then about two years later, I was up to 125 when they wanted me to, the union wanted to come in and, and uh, unionize me. And Ms. Barry said, well, we don't, we've already talked about it. We don't have to have the union. Well, they wanted the union <laughs> anyway. It wasn't for you. This is for you. It's for the, whoever follows him. Working aboard the bookmobile continued to often be a physical challenge. Helen Young remembers an early journey in her career aboard the drafty Rio Speedwagon. I remember the day Olaf and I went out <clears throat> on what was called the rural school trip, which was my most unfavorite trip. And we used to go to, oh, 27, 37 schools in a day. It was ghastly. Little rural schools and, you know, way out in the country, on these country bumpy roads, dusty in the summertime. But one day, it was the day that it was 33 below zero in Minneapolis. and. For some reason, I, Olaf and I had just started. It wasn't very long. And um, I thought Miss Berry would say, well, it really is too cold to go out today. But she, I think, didn't want to, us to get the idea that this was a sissy job. So we didn't say anything, and she didn't say anything. <laughs> we went out. We got on a little country road, I don't know, it was miles, and outside of Osseo. The snow was extremely deep that winter, and we got stuck. And Olaf had to get out and shovel, and we had to back up about at least a half a mile to get off that road. And then we went back to Osseo, and we, I said, this is it, we're going home. <laughs> we got, and when we get to the schools, they were closed. But we kept going. We weren't going to give up and be sissies, you know. The one way, way out would have been, might have been open. And um, so we got back to Osseo, and we went into the hardware store, and they had a great big pot-bellied stove. Oh. Nothing ever felt so good because on the bookmobile we just had a little, just a regular little truck, little heater, the kind that you had in your, your cars, nothing else. And Olaf didn't have any. I had that in front of me. It was cold. <laughs> we were just congealed. <laughs> in establishing routes, the bookmobile staff always tried to accommodate requests for services. 
we had a basic route, uh, I suppose, to begin with. You know, when I came in, they were already established. But then people would say, well, so-and-so <coughs> over on County Road, so-and-so would like to have you stop there. And uh, so we would find out, how do you get to that person's house? And or they would call up the, up the library and ask, you know, will the bookmobile stop? Or where can we meet it? Or something of that sort. It was, it was more or less by word of mouth and individual requests. Personal service and a genuine interest in people were trademarks of the bookmobile staff. Try to uh, be as friendly as you could with the people. And I didn't do a lot of reading. I just did a lot of talking. And we stopped right in front of their house, so if, if we uh, or in the, right in the farmyard, right up by the door, and if she had, and I would discharge all the books, I said, oh, you still have this or that out? Oh, it's under the bed. I better run and get it. And I um, kidded with the kids and made a, called them different names, and, and uh, they would say, well, what did he call you today? And, and uh, then I would, uh, I would made the mothers, of course, relax them. They didn't have to be constantly hollering at the kids. And, but, uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, sometimes uh, we come close to lunchtime, and I say, well, what are we having for lunch today? Or, The first record of bookmobile log books was in the late 1930s. The logs recorded trends in use and fascinating insights into the personalized way bookmobile staff linked people to books. But Miss Barry was, uh, she really uh, pushed trip logs. It didn't, it, you know, it, well, of course, Helen Young and Miss Barry were the only two that went on the bookmobile when I joined, and each one of them wrote on every day, wrote something about what happened. The Hennepin County Library Bookmobile Service had grown steadily throughout the 1930s and stood ready to face the challenges of the next decade.